the thumbnail of your YouTube video will be a deal breaker in the video's success. While there isn't a secret recipe for a thumbnail that will get millions of clicks, there are some things that you can do to help. Let's make a thumbnail together. Hey everyone, I'm Dom from Wondershare Uniconverter. Thumbnails play essentially the most important role in your video's success. At least, it sets the stage for success. It's the first piece of information that the viewers will see of your video. The information it gives the viewers will make them decide whether or not they want to see what's behind that cover. The thumbnail of your video is the same as a book's cover. Though, according to the famous saying, you shall not judge a book by its cover, but first of all, everybody judges. Second of all, when it comes to YouTube videos, it's hardly possible not to. So people will and will decide whether or not they want to click on your video based on your thumbnail. In a recent video, we went over the most important YouTube metrics, including the CTR click-through rate, that you can perfectly measure your thumbnail's success with. It's a metric that shows what percentage of people clicked on your thumbnail from the amount of people that actually saw it. If that value is too low, your thumbnail is probably not good enough. So what is a good thumbnail like? There are some adjectives we can use such as eye-catching, interesting, intriguing, but actually making one is much harder. Ultimately, you need to think with the viewer's eyes. What would they find interesting? What would be a concept that is giving the viewers hints but remains mysterious enough to make them want to click on it? There used to be a time on YouTube when everyone was using clickbait thumbnails. Essentially thumbnails that are promising more than what the viewer will eventually get. It's a working practice for getting clicks, but can very much defect the video's performance. So what can we learn from this? Well, that your video's content will very much define your thumbnail. So the very first step in making a good thumbnail is having good content behind it. Of course, even for a bad video, you can work on uh, making your thumbnail aesthetically look good. But ultimately, if your content is bad, your video will not be a success. But if we take Mr. Beast as an example, he has these apparently clickbaity thumbnails. Take a look at them. But he actually delivers on them. Obviously, what he's doing is completely extraordinary, but his thumbnail philosophy is a good inspiration for us. So let's sum up what we need to pay attention to so far. It needs to suggest or promise something that we will actually deliver on. The content needs to be intriguing enough to the viewers, and we have to do all of this in an eye-catching and interesting way. All right, sounds straightforward enough. Let's try to do it. So the next questions in line are what tools to use and what images to use. Well, in terms of images, you can use frames from your video. You can download images from the internet, or you can also generate images with AI. It's also good if at the end of your video recording, you do a few positions you can use as still images for your thumbnail. The direction we're gonna take is generating AI images and then compiling the thumbnail in Photoshop and in Canva. First things first, we need to generate the images. I'm sure you know AI image generators, but we're gonna use the AI thumbnail maker in the Uniconverter. This feature requires credits in order to work, but you get some for free at the beginning. So let's open up the tool. First of all, choose a style that you like. Then down here, you can choose the aspect ratio. For YouTube, we obviously need 16 to nine, but if you need thumbnails for other platforms, you have options for that as well. Then down here, write your prompt. Describe what you want to see. In many cases, it's impossible to find images for certain topics. For instance, for my demonstrational purposes, I'm making a thumbnail for a video that would be about conspiracy theories, talking about the news of building a moon base and people moving there. So that's what I will base my prompt on. So let's write it here and then click on generate. If you don't like the results, modify the prompt and generate again, but save the images first in case there's the slightest chance that you'd want to use them. Otherwise they will be lost. Okay, I think I like this one. So let's save it and move on to the next step. So import the generated image into Photoshop. As a first step, I'll adjust the frame by scaling and moving the image. Then I'll separate this spaceship. Now set up some feather and border smoothness for the mask and save it as a new layer. I didn't perfectly separate it, but that's all right because I don't need this bottom part anyway. Let's add the title text in our thumbnail. Now I usually spend some time changing the words and setting up the colors and the position of the text. The colors are very important to be set right because you need the text to pop and drive the eyes. 
Sometimes transforming is a good way to give it a unique look. Here, for example, I'm changing the perspective and I'm also adding a drop shadow to it. Now, my original plan was to have the spaceship cover up a part of the image, but now I realize that I need to move it more to the right side and make this space smaller here. So in order to do that, I will have to extend the image on the left. So first I'll give it a little blur, then I'll use the clone stamp and then the spot healing tool. And I finally mask this area with a strong feather and blur it out even more to hide, you know, the inaccuracy in the extended part because I really didn't do a perfect job here. Now we have enough space for the text. The spaceship is nicely positioned. It's not entirely in the middle, not too much on the side. So let's add something extra here. I'm gonna put the earth there. Fun fact, you don't need to download the images each time. You can just copy and paste them. Okay, let's position it and remove the background with one click. The same way you can do it with the unit converter. In the blending option, I give it a little glow and then set up transparency and blending here as well. You know, to make it look realistic. I'll add another spaceship here. The same way, just copy it. And on Mac, and I actually just realized it, you can copy only the subject and paste it. Then I transform it, I position it, and I give it a little glow and change the colors. Now, as it's supposed to be moving, I'll add some motion blur to it as well. And I'm using the directional blur here. You know what? Let's duplicate it. I'm going to change the colors again, the blur again. But this time I'm going to go with a normal Gaussian blur. And finally, I'll change the colors again. So the colors of these spaceships fit the color palette of this entire thumbnail. Okay. And uh, as a final, final step, I'll add a vibrance layer here to make the whole thing pop a bit more. And when I'm done, I like to zoom out from the thumbnail and see how is it in a small version? Since that's how people will see it. If the thumbnail doesn't work in a small version, you have to work on it some more. Okay, let's export it. Make sure that the output file size is under two megabytes because that's the limit on YouTube. Okay, there you have it. I think it turned out pretty well. Now, the other tool we can use is Canva, which is available for everyone with an account. For this purpose, let's do a still image in this video that we will use for the thumbnail. So. Anyway, I'll choose one. So in Canva, we'll have less options, less tools, and it's less powerful, but we can choose a template to start out with, which is a good way to get inspiration and save us some time. Let's go with this one. Okay, first I'll delete this guy from here and edit the text. Now let's import our screenshot that I'll took from the video footage. I'm gonna get rid of this confetti because I don't like it anymore. Now let's color correct it a little. And I'll modify the text part again and import some new elements, a Photoshop logo and a uni converter logo. And I'm going to position them nicely. And again, I'll change the colors here on the text itself. You really just have to play around with these until you make something that you like and something that works. And when you're done, you can export it. It's not bad, but in Photoshop, you obviously have more options. Also, if you have a subscription for Canva, you will have more options, but I wanted to talk about the free version of it. So there you go, guys. I hope you picked up some skills for making YouTube thumbnails. And if you did, leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more content related to video making. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next video.